Hello and welcome to Southern Regional College's um, summer webinars. This webinar is about 3D design and modelling, and I'll be your host, James Donnelly. Um, I am an innovation technology specialist in the college. I have over 20 years hands on experience in engineering, covering all areas from design to manufacture. I've worked in various industries from general engineering to civils to agriculture and to recycling. And with this webinar, I've got Solid Solutions helping me. Um, we've got Graham. Graham is an industrial expert in solid works and has many years experience in the field. So I'm going to pass you on to him and hopefully he can take you through uh, the workshop. Perfect. Um, good morning, everybody. Um, yeah, thanks for the introduction, James. So my name's Graham. So I work with Solid Solutions. So we're a, a solid works um, partner. Um, we provide um, software and support services across the, all of the SolidWorks um, portfolio of products. So today's session really over the next 35 minutes or so, I'm going to take you through a fairly uh, rapid fire introduction to what SolidWorks is all about. Um, it's going to give you a good introduction to um, what um, the CAD tool is, is about uh, and run through a typical workflow and hopefully describe, um, I guess, the benefits of using 3D design um, as, as we go through this example. Um, I'm just going to kill my camera as well, just to help with a bit of bandwidth and uh, and distractions for my uh, my ugly mug as we go through it. So let's jump straight in. So the example that we're going to run through today is based on a real life customer example. Um, they're a company called Biodapt. Um, they make some cool equipment. Um, the, the owner, Mike Schultz, used to be a um, an extreme sports fan or still is, uh, but he had an accident a few years ago and unfortunately lost a, a leg below the knee, but he still wanted to continue um, um, enjoying the sports that, it, that, it, that he did before. So he started a company called Biodapt to design, manufacture performance prosthetics uh, and adaptive equipment specifically for more rugged environments, should we say, and extreme sports. You can see from some of the pictures there. So the product that we're going to kind of concentrate on today is uh, one of his um, leg prosthetics. We've got a, um, a motor knee, they call it, and a foot. And I guess a lot of the equipment that he designs is interchangeable based on the sport that he's in at the time, whether it's um, motocross, um, skidooing, um, you can put the right attachments on onto the uh, uh, to the foot to allow it to connect to the vehicle that you're driving, I suppose. So what are we going to go through in SolidWorks? So this is a, a, a real life example, as I said, and it gives us a good opportunity to, to show all the stages of the process. So we're going to look at designing, so kind of component design, first of all. We'll look at then how we can detail that up in the form of a 2D drawing. We'll then assemble uh, that new component into the assembly to finish the model off, and then we'll document that final general arrangement with a, um, a, a top level drawing and maybe it's associated bill of materials. So the design stage is first. So if I switch into my SolidWorks here, and uh, we'll see the Moto Knee assembly in my SolidWorks. So I guess first and foremost, the, you know, the original initial benefit of working in 3D is just being able to visualize the design very, very clearly. There's no ambiguity about uh, what it is that you're looking at on the screen. We can clearly see what this thing looks like. Um, we can navigate around, zoom and pan um, and get all the benefits of the of the 3D visualization capabilities of SOLIDWORKS. Now for this demonstration, we're going to um, assume a, um, a design change is required on this. Uh, this lower bracket is maybe has been deemed to be maybe is a, uh, not quite fit for purpose. We're going to redesign it and we're going to incorporate a, um, uh, some kind of feature to link this uh, shock absorber into it rather than just using it a pin. Uh, and screw um, combination as we have here. So first job is to remove the old parts. Perhaps this is a prototype stage, so I can simply select all of those and we can uh, we can delete them out. So this then frees the, the 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 shock error, and you can see this moves around. We'll talk about a mechanism design and and some of the tools that we have to in, uh, interrogate the the models uh, a little bit later once we've built the part. So now we've got a gap and we've got to redesign a lower bracket. So what I'm going to do is just start a new part in SOLIDWORKS. So we, we can create parts, assemblies and drawings, I guess 3D parts, 3D assemblies and 2D drawings, uh, which we'll get to a bit later on. So parts first. 
we start with a big blank canvas. So we are working in 3D space here. So we have a, um, a nice empty viewport currently. Down the left hand side of the screen, we have what we call a feature manager. So this is common in a lot of CAD tools, and this allows us to um, see the history of the model as we've constructed it feature by feature. So SOLIDWORKS is what we call a parametric design tool uh, in that it captures everything you do on the screen. So whether you're drawing um, a sketch and adding dimensions and creating 3D shapes or features, everything is listed chronologically. And that, as you'll see in a moment, um, allows us to make changes very quickly. Um, to help us position our sketches or, or start the design, it'd be useful to see where we can draw. So we've got some planes. So imagine these are bits of paper in 3D space that allow us to orient ourselves um, in this big, um, vast, empty space. So I'm going to use a, a plane here just to start the sketch. And we've got our sketching tools um, at the top. The SOLIDWORKS interface is very intuitive. So we have a kind of ribbon or tabbed browser at the top where we can customize tools and access all of our different commands. Um, so I'm going to use a, a sketch just to start this, this shape off. We can, you'll notice we can um, dimension as we go as well. So I've just got a rectangle and I'm going to make this uh, 25 by um, 65 and SOLIDWORKS automatically, if we know how to use a, a keyboard grim, um, type in the right number and so automatically sizes the sketch. This is under defined still in that well, this is still kind of free to move around the screen. Uh, logically, I might just want to anchor this in my origin so we can just snap that into the middle. Um, these dimensions are kind of flexible in that we can move them around to, to neaten the screen up. We can also double click to edit them um, as required. Now, as we kind of see this, this is very simplistic. We're going to extrude this and turn this into an extrusion. So jumping into our 3D features, we've got a range of extrusions. Um, an extruded boss is the first step. And we can preview this. You see you get nice clear visuals um, as to what's going to happen. So we can either drag this dynamically on the screen or we can simply type a value in. So we'll make this 40 millimeters. And there's our cube. OK, not very jazzy at the moment. We're getting there. But that's the first step. Now we can kind of shape this a bit further. So we need to um, maybe round off these external edges. So we have a, a fillet command. A lot of commands are available right at the mouse, so we don't need to go hunting through the interface for them. So I can select um, the fillet command. We get a preview. We can add some additional edges. Again, we have some additional, I guess, intelligence within these commands to auto select additional edges that SOLIDWORKS thinks we, we need to include. Uh, so there's the other three edges and we can apply that. Now we need two holes through this. Remember on the assembly there was two pins or two long um, um, bolts that we need to mount this onto. Um, so putting holes into things is very common and it's very simple in SOLIDWORKS. So we have a hole wizard feature for that and this allows us to effectively select the, the type of fastener that's going to go, or the fastener that we need and SOLIDWORKS will build the hole around it. So using my um, selections on the left, we can choose various styles of holes. We've got counter sinks, um, counter balls, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So I need an M8, uh, a hole for an M8 clearance uh, with some counter sinks on, on the far and the near side. So we can set this up. We've got through all M8. Uh, that'll do. Let's start a counter head screw. And then we'll put some um, clearance on either side. Um, of 14. And to preview this, I guess we need to tell it where they are. So when we go to positions, we can select a face to draw on. SOLIDWORKS gives us a, if we look square on, nice previews, and we can simply click and place. Appreciate this is probably not so clear at the moment, but we get some previews. We can then position these points relative to the, you know, perhaps the, the origin that we're working on um, to, to line them up. So we can add rules like such as horizontal or vertical to give design intent into this part. Uh, we can add manual dimensions as well, just as we did before. So perhaps we want a dimension from the from the centers. Um, this picture on this needs to be 45, so we can actually in these input forms, we can you know, we can use it as a calculator. We can type in parameters. As we did there, excuse me. Uh, and another dimension for the other side. And then 
that's that's a job done. I guess we could go further and link these dimensions. So if we change one, they both change, but that'll do for the for this uh, demonstration. Uh, and we can see the preview. Now we need to um, just double check the settings here. So I've got the right um, size. That's it. Camera sync, flat rig, M8. Perfect. So, and you can see now the the hull is generated through the whole part. Um, on the left hand side, we mentioned the feature tree. So although this is a very simple part so far, you know, we've created three features and we've got the ability to kind of step back through the part. We can roll this back and forth in time uh, and access all of that underlying information. So if we ever needed, if we ever made a mistake or we needed to go back and change the values, this can be up to date. Uh, we can access that in information very quickly. Right, let's. Uh, we need a boss. The whole point of this redesign was to create another boss to allow the shock absorber to be mounted onto here as well. So we can create another sketch. We can reuse geometry. So let's say this top edge and this radius here, we wanted to trace over it or copy them. We can convert those and that uses it or projects it into our current sketch. And if I just look square on again, we can then just add some additional information just to shape this part off. And then trim up any remnants that we need to, so we can uh, we can um, access a whole range of trimming commands and modification um, or tr sketch modification tools if we needed to. So there's my again underdefined sketch, so we can put some dimensions on for this as well. So this is going to be 10 millimeter radius. We want to make it 25 to the hole. And again, that turns black, so if SOLIDWORKS is big on colours, we can very clearly see that this has been fully defined now. Um, we can then extrude it. So I need to extrude this on again symmetrically, as we did before, but not quite as wide. Um, so this is going to be 36 millimetres. And there's my boss. Now we need a notch or a cutout, so we can reuse anything we've previously created. So that sketch that I drew, might as well reuse it to create a cut profile. So I can simply select it, and we can use a cut this time um, not quite as as much only 14 millimeters and that removes the, the material in the middle now um we need another kind of hole arrangement through here this is more of an advanced hole i suppose we have a clearance for a um we're going to do a like a shoulder screw it's going to go into here and then a, a tapped hole in the other boss so what we can do is select i guess the outer faces to give us the boundary now we have a, another version of our hull wizard called an advanced hull, and this really allows us to configure different types of holes that are going through different uh, kind of depths within the, the length of the hull, if that makes sense. Um, just to, for example, I've got some favourites set up here. So this imagine could be for maybe a, a manifold hull going through multiple layers of, of, of material. We have a, a counter bore, then a couple of clearance holes, then a tap, then another counter bore at the other end. Um, I've got a an M6 that I want to use here, my favourites. Favourites are good because it says you have to recreate everything every time. You do it once and then store it as a favourite, but create it in the same way as the whole wizard I did previously. All we need to do here is then just to position it so we can select the edge of the boss to warm the centre up and then just snap the point on. And we get a nice clearance hole with a tap on the other side. Notice the texture comes through on the thread. This is just to visualise um, the, the tapped hole um, on that on that one arm. OK, let's start to look a bit better. We need to maybe round off some of these edges as well. So we perhaps want to fill it um, so we could use a fillet command. We can select a lot of these uh, edges here and then use a fillet command. Two millimeters this time will do. See the preview comes on. We can add some additional edges if we wanted to. Maybe around the back to do that. And then these top edges will maybe use a chamfer this time. So these top faces here, again, just working directly in the in the interface, we can select them and choose uh, a chamfer. We'll do uh, maybe just 1.5 millimeters, and that transitions around those perimeter edges. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now, again, just to demonstrate, if we you know we decided to make some changes to this, we could go back in, really back in time. Um, I did notice that I've got a, an additional countersink at the front, which we didn't need. Um, so I can um, go back and 
effectively roll the model back so you can see that the boss has just disappeared that we've done um, so that I can come back and change my, you know, if we needed, you know, the, the parameters of the, of the screw if we needed to. Um, we'll leave that alone for the moment. So, and then we can roll it back to the, to the current point in time when it's complete. Now, other than just clearly building the geometry, SOLIDWORKS can capture a lot more information about the design, so such as material. Um, material can be added. Um, I guess the reason we add a material is that SOLIDWORKS can then tell us how heavy it is. Uh, also downstream, if you were doing some analysis, structural analysis, or finite element analysis to give it its full title, we could um, we could understand how strong it is. So we're just going to make this out of a 6061 aluminium alloy. And you can see some of the material properties are stored in here as well, such as yield and tensile strength. Um, when we apply this though, SOLIDWORKS now has enough information for us to understand the mass properties of this design. So just to demonstrate that, I can just click mass properties up here. We've got weight, um, 0.17 kilos. We've got volume, surface area, centers of mass as well, which is about visible in this little this little triad in the middle here. So, you know, very easy to extract this type of data. Um, you know, it, doing this sort of thing in 2D is, is virtually impossible. So that's all good. Uh, we can also then capture attributes or any information about the, you know, like descriptions, part numbering. Um, so in SOLIDWORKS, we have a, um, a, some custom properties that we can input. So it could be that I just want to, um, you know, capture some company specific data about this model. Uh, this is a fully customizable form that you can design yourself. So I'm going to put a description in, lower bracket, uh, make a part number up for this. We'll call this 17-900, my naming convention, model by myself. Uh, we'll draw that, uh, say that it's been done today uh, and it's a, a, a made part. And then we can also add additional data. This is the stuff that you might need downstream since the things like title blocks on drawings. Uh, this is a machined part and we're going to maybe just leave it as bare alloy. So when we apply this, then that is sort of captured within the model and can be used downstream. So last job is just to save it. So we'll do a file, save as, and I'm going to save this part. Notice the file name comes through automatically. Um, and I'm saving this during the course of this demonstration in my SOLIDWORKS PDM, which is a product data management environment to allow us to kind of securely store and access our SOLIDWORKS files. I'll kind of touch on this a little bit more as we go through, but for the moment, I'm just going to save it. So just to kind of quickly summarize what we work, work through there is a very simple intuitive workflow to build 3D fully parametric CAD models. Um, the interface, hopefully, um, uh, as you saw me doing that, is is very simple and, and easy to learn. The, the learning curve for SOLIDWORKS is very shallow, as it were. You know, we have official training courses, but you can be productive very, very quickly. Let's move into the detailing stage. So the detailing typically is generating 2D drawings, uh, which is still the main deliverable for most people uh, in manufacturing and engineering. So let's see how we can do that in SOLIDWORKS. So we've got our part. We can then generate a, um, a, excuse me, a drawing from that automatically. We've really done the hard work already. Um, so we can select a drawing template. SOLIDWORKS allows us to build our own or we can use um, um, use any of the presets. So I've got a, a customized one here with our logos on it. And you can see then SOLIDWORKS displays a, a set of thumbnail views um, of the model in various orientations. We can just drop, uh, drag and drop these out and we can um, kind of project around from here. So maybe a, a top view is useful, a right view, um, isometric view up in the corner, because why not, right? It's easy to do in 3D. Um, the views can be positioned and changed on the sheet. Um, the styles of the views can be changed so such as, you know, we might want to get rid of some of these fillet kind of edges, the tangent edges that are visible here. Uh, we can remove those to clean the views up a little bit. So I'll just do that on these uh, on these three. Uh, we can show things like hidden detail, so I might want to bring the hidden detail through. Um, I didn't. I did miss the countersink off there. That was my fault. <laughs> we can go back and edit that. That's not a problem. Um, this view here might be useful to show it in shaded mode, just so it brings the colours and things through as well. Now, in terms of annotating the views, once you've got them laid out, very very simple. SOLIDWORKS obviously has the dimensions and all of the 
information in the 3D part that was used to create it. So it's just a case of really switching it on and, and, and assigning it to views. So we have a, an import tool that allows us to suck out all that data from the 3D part. Uh, I'm going to choose the entire model and I want to also filter through and bring, um, remember these whole wizard holes that we brought through. Uh, I would be useful to bring the call outs for those and their dimensional or if there's any dimensions related to their position. Um, and then once we hit OK, SOLIDWORKS will create the dimensions and really just places everything as it was really in the model. It's up to us then just to do a little bit of housekeeping, but still very simple. You know, we can move dimensions around. We can tidy the views up a little bit if we needed to. OK, uh, we can change the, the type and the style of dimension. So it could be that these two dimensions are a little bit overkill to show that chamfer. So I could just hide them or delete them and show that in a different way. So we'll do a chamfer maybe on this edge instead. OK, or if I click, click the right edge grim. There we go. OK, so lots of ways to simplify various dimension styles. I'm not going to go through all of the annotation tools here at the, today. It's a little bit uh, kind of out of the scope. Um, we can auto arrange. We can do some really nice kind of automatic kind of positioning as well. Um, there's a whole range of annotations that we could, you know, if, if required, start applying to our detailed drawings, um, such as surface finish symbols, weld symbols, additional hole information. Um, if we wanted to add sort of center lines onto here as well, we could start selecting, you know, center lines of holes and SOLIDWORKS will start adding them to the views. We wanted to just show a couple on these holes here from the different views. Um, other types of views are often required on detail drawings, such as cross sections for more complex parts or details or cutaway sections. Um, we can do this very easily here as well. Um, it doesn't really warrant one, but we'll do one of a section anyway. So let's do a section maybe straight down the middle of this uh, this 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 series of like the shoulders on the on the right hand side here. So I can snap my section into different orientations and position it where we need to. And then once we have a um, section on there we can just extract that I'll put this to the left and let's just shuffle some of these views over this gives us real insight into what's going on inside the part I do appreciate this is a very simplistic section but you get the idea uh, we could even drill into this more uh, if we needed to show uh, maybe as a detail view um, I don't know if, if some of these internal areas here let's draw a draw a circle that we could uh, zoom into if we wanted to then you know help us annotate these out in more detail put some fillets on there okay so very quickly you can generate very high quality professional detail drawings for manufacturing remember the custom information that i stored when i built the model so the material and the description and things earlier that can also be extracted and displayed in title blocks so my title block here I have a description of the part, the material, the process and the finish and my my initials in today's date. So they all of this is automatic. You know, the model is the master. Everything that we generate in there can be extracted downstream. So um, detailing out, you know, we, we looked at how we can very quickly automatically place and, and insert the views and the dimensions directly from the model to prove um, to produce production quality detailed drawings. Um, and because it's generated from the 3D model, you're avoiding any errors. You know, as long as the model's right, theoretically, the drawing should be correct as well. Um, now, we've also got a, a function where we can share designs. So I just wanted to finish off with that one, where if, if you've got a design in SOLIDWORKS and you want to often share it downstream with maybe as a manufacturing partner or a different department within the business, um, we can, you know, rather than them having to have SOLIDWORKS, um, we can send them in a different format that they can view and access for free. So this is called e-drawings. So if I wanted to send this drawing to uh, one of my colleagues, perhaps, or um, in another team, I can save as an e-drawing. So this just takes a second to generate. And an e-drawing is SOLIDWORKS's effectively viewing tool. It's on my other screen. Let me drag this over. Um, it's a very lightweight, similar to a PDF, I suppose. Very lightweight document that's shareable. Um, for free that you just need the e-drawings viewing software installed um, and you can pan and zoom around you don't need very you know you don't need any experience to, or, or, or learnings to be able to kind of navigate these things um, you can't edit the model it's completely safe inside of here but the benefit of this over something like a pdf is that you've got the 
the, the 2D drawing here, but we could actually come down and hit the play button and SOLIDWORKS will animate the model between the views as well. So you've got very little ambiguity on complex drawings. Um, I don't know how well this is coming across on the on the live stream, but hopefully you'll see the, the animation moving. We can even stop this and we can pick up um, different views and we can manually rotate those around. So it's as if we're in SOLIDWORKS. Obviously, we can't edit anything, but for viewing purposes, this is really, really um, very, very powerful. That's coming across excellent there, Graham. OK, excellent. Um, so you can, you know, any and anyone can install this and there's even apps you can download for smartphones, um, iOS and Android devices for e-drawings. Um, you could install them from your local kind of app store and people can send you them on an email and you can view those. So if you're out in the field as well, it's a very useful tool. OK, so back in SOLIDWORKS. So the next stage we had on our process here is building. So we've built the part, we've created the um, the detailed drawing, and we're just going to finish off with the assembly. So back into SOLIDWORKS. And there's our component. I'm just going to pin, pin this to the left and there's our assembly on the right hand side. And really just a case of a bit like a Lego kit now, just assembling these things together. So I can drag and drop one part into the other screen. OK, and then we can connect it. Now we connect this through what we call mates. So mates are really just connections between individual um, faces or edges in the model. So I could say, well, actually this this face and this face need to be concentric because they're going to, you know, there's a, there's a bolt run through it. Um, so I can select those. SOLIDWORKS presents suggested mating um, options. So I'll make that concentric. Um, if we need to ever edit any of these, we can again access a list of the, the mates and um, SOD's law always goes the wrong way the first time. So I can just flip this around, that's not a problem. And then we can mate the other end. So you can see this is still kind of, it's partially constrained, it can slide along. And then we can set a concentric mate on these two. And then to center this, I'm just going to choose again kind of pairs of faces. So I want to sort of center this thing in between these four pairs. And that then snaps it right into the middle. OK, now to attach the shocker, remember we placed, we, we deleted the pin earlier. So and we made a hole for a shoulder screw. So the shoulder screw that I'm going to put in. Is a. Um, available i guess we could have modeled this this could have been a card model that we get from a supplier um we can also um look in what we call toolbox so solidworks um some versions have a, a toolbox so a toolbox is a library of mechanical fasteners nuts bolts screws washers etc um, and allows us to really no one in their right mind wants to start modeling bolts right you know most of this type of stuff is bought in um so if we can we can um, model that or have that available to us, that's a, a huge benefit, particularly for uh, large assembly builders, machine builders, where a lot of this stuff is, is commonplace. So we can navigate through lists of uh, bearings, bolts, screws, nuts, washers um, to find the, the fastener that we want. I've got this actually stored in my favorites. So if there's one that you use over and over again, we can access it very quickly. So I can easily select the edge of the hole we want to attach it to. So this is the threaded hole side of this. And then I can insert my hex socket shoulder screw directly into there. And SOLIDWORKS has sized it appropriately because it knew that when I built the model, I asked for a, you know, an M8 or an M6, whatever it was, and it sized the bolt to um, an M8 as it happens here. And there's our there's our shoulder screw in there. And then all we need to do is just simply connect those two faces concentrically. And job done. Now, one last thing we need to edit. You'll notice that because we we've changed. Hello, I think we've lost your voice there, Graham. Oh, wish that's at night. Um, so we, we we basically were inserting the parts. We've got the um, we the shocker assembled to the bolt. Last change on this assembly really is just to look at the uh, editing the size of this hole. So the power of SOLIDWORKS in an assembly context is we can still access all of that part geometry. 
So we can we can edit features that exist or create new features simply by double clicking in this case. Hopefully you can see that exposes the, the, dim, the dimensions at the part level and I'm just going to increase the size of the hole to accommodate access to that new the new fastener. OK, and obviously if this this red side plate had any downstream. <coughs> Graham, sorry to interrupt you there. Graham, there's somebody talking in the background and it's just distorting the sound a wee bit. If, you, if in your, okay. your background, I think. Yeah. Uh, OK. Let me, uh, sorry, I, I was on a hands free here just to save my uh, headset. Let me, let me move my mic around a bit. You still got me OK? Right. So, um, yeah, we just made that last modification to that, that side plate. So really, that's our, that's our assembly done. It's all up to date, all good to go. And we can just save this. And that is now complete. So I guess we're just really skimming as an introduction in this session into the some of the capabilities within the assembly environment. So we looked at, you know, kind of inserting parts, positioning them very easily, um, and I guess using the mate tools. Um, in this case, we we looked at, you know, there, there's there was some mechanism design with that shocker. Um, we can um, validate all of that, um, and there's a whole range of additional productivity tools. Um, um, I guess we haven't kind of got time to go into them all today, um, but they are there. I guess the whole point is to validate your assembly mechanism before you've you've built anything. OK, all right. The last step on here, just to wrap up the next couple of minutes is the documentation. So much like the detailing of the part, we had um, uh, a drawing. We're going to create a drawing of this final assembly. It's exactly the same process. I guess there are a couple of specific um, assembly functions that are useful on general arrangement drawings. Um, one of them is exploded views, actually. So there's quite a few parts in this assembly, and I've created an exploded view um, um, kind of partially. I just need to edit it to include the new bracket that we added. So just to demonstrate that. So we're still in the assembly environment here. Um, I have a um, exploded view set up. You can see. So this is really just like effectively a version of the assembly with the parts spaced out. And all I can do is if I wanted to you know, add some more steps to this um, is um, pick up some of these parts and just move them out. So I'll drag the bolt out. And then pull that bracket down. It just helps again visualize how these parts go together. So there's my effectively now repaired or updated exploded view. And we'll collapse that back together. And now to make the drawing from this to finish off, I'm going to use the same template. And lay out the views. We don't need quite as many for this one. Maybe it's a side view. There's a back view or front view. Um, isometric as well. Now that ex or the, the exploded view that we created earlier. As we said, that might be useful to show. So any view we can toggle between its kind of collapsed or exploded state. I'll bring the colors onto these because it looks quite nice for assembly models. Um, to complement the view here, a bill of materials is often required. Well, it's certainly required for assemblies. SolarWorks knows exactly what is in this, the names of the parts, all of the metadata and descriptions, as we said earlier. So I can insert that table very quickly. We can choose the depth that we need to go to. I'll just use top level only for the moment. Uh, and then when we create a, a table, we can see there, I'm going to snap this into the corner. We've got our, our bill of materials table. These are fully configurable, so you can choose the columns of information that is, is, is visible in here. Um, I've just got part number and description because that's uh, um, what we captured earlier. Um, and these can be saved as templates as well for repeatability down, down the line. Last thing to do on here maybe is, is the obviously we've got some item numbers now. We want to attach balloons or call outs to those parts to indicate which is which. So I can auto balloon the view. SolarWorks does a great job of positioning those balloons initially, and then we can come down and just fine tune those if we need to just to space them out. Well, based on how much space you've got on your sheet, I suppose that looks good. And there's our top level assembly model complete. And we're just left to save this. 
So this is being saved as well into my my PDM system. And we can confirm the again the metadata and information that we've captured. And that's now our our job complete. So I guess just to summarize then in the same way we did the documentation for the parts, it's a consistent workflow. There's no new tools to kind of learn and use. We looked at an automatic bill of material and item balloon extraction um, and any comprehensive assembly views with the well the exploded view in that case um, to, to make the, the part um, or the drawing you know unambiguous and, and, and very clear as to what's going on. So if we maybe just summarize then you know we looked at a, a typical design scenario for building a part detailing that up using it in an assembly and then finalizing that with a general arrangement um, we've looked at how quick SOLIDWORKS is you know in terms of building CAD geometry um, it's a very short learning curve um, which is what you want to be productive you don't want to battle the CAD system you want to work with it um, we looked at how everything is linked to the model to reduce you know potential uh, manufacturing errors or mistakes um, as long as the model is correct there shouldn't be anything wrong with the the, the produced parts uh, we looked at various ways to improve communication just through the fact that it's a 3d native environment that you're working in we looked at the e-drawings tool to communicate those drawings as well um, and we looked at different ways to well we touched on those to how to validate your ideas i guess in terms of just working in the assembly you're checking for you know fit and function of that design as you build it and put it put it together and hopefully get it right the first time okay so I appreciate I've kind of rattled through that very quickly. Uh, this is really just scratching the surface of SOLIDWORKS and its capabilities. Um, I guess the title of the session was an introduction to SOLIDWORKS, which is which exactly what we've just done. So um, we have got a, um, um, you know, if anyone has got any questions, we've kind of been keeping one eye on the on the questions boxes and comments uh, or chat boxes. We've gone through that. I haven't had in my ear that there's any questions, so hopefully I've described everything uh, well enough for people. Um, so if anyone else wants to come in and uh, have any comments, that's good. Graham, yeah, that was that was uh, I'm not a designer, so um, <laughs> I'm uh, tourism background, but I really found that absolutely fascinating. So uh, the James and yourself and uh, uh, to everyone involved here, that was that was brilliant. And um, there are a few questions here, James. Um, they're kind of elementary, but um, I think it's interesting if somebody was coming from scratch, really. How does solid how much does solid works cost? Oh, that's a multi-million pound question. Um, <laughs> it, it, de it depends. Yeah, I mean, it's probably not for the for this for this session to discuss kind of cost because I guess every company's requirements are different. Yeah. Um, th there's multiple versions of SOLIDWORKS. There's there's three levels of the core tool from um, standard, professional and premium. They have various modules inside of there that can you know do different things. So it depends on what you want to want to what you need to do with SOLIDWORKS, really, whether it's just core design or analysis or data management there's various kind of maybe, maybe arising from that if you could signpost after this if you were an sme 10 employees trading for 10 years uh, you've obviously been using some kind of your staff who are trained in it and you want to have a license for you know maybe you don't have to answer that right now but maybe if there's a week case study in northern ireland um, uh, i see tim's on the line there too you could point us to might be useful yeah, certainly can provide plenty of those. Not sure if my audio is on or off, actually. Here. Yeah, you're on. Um, yeah. So, yeah, in terms of costs, I mean, anything from renting it kind of £700 a quarter to yeah. um, buying it and owning it forever with simulation capabilities at sort of 78000 so everywhere in between. And just one thing worth mentioning on a call like this is um, our startup program. So I know we've worked with James before on a few of those, but we do have provision for and new start companies less than three years old and um, that can have access to our software completely free of charge in the first 12 months. So there are options there, everything from no cost to, to full perpetual licensing um, and happy to chat to anyone about the differences and the options but in between. That top few, like, that top like quest. Go ahead, James. There's a few clients that Tim has, you know, managed to get them a, a bit of a version, a free version of it for the first year or so and it's been very very helpful for them yeah. it's actually brought their business on to soft to the next level if you know what i mean but you know 
it it really is a good program to do that you know one of the advantages of that scheme just to finish up on that you know if we do if uh, if it is suitable for that scheme is that you get access to all of our tools so not just the modeling but it allows you to dabble in some of the other things Graham sort of alluded to so simulation technical documentation uh product rendering animation so it's a good way to explore everything that you might want to do as a business but yeah james can certainly point you in that direction he's aware of how all those schemes are administered as well Chris. does it do the pdm system as well there yes yeah, so you can have access to those tools so i suppose on a question on pdm and um, the reason why some companies at the early stage may not put that in place is because it takes a little bit of um, thinking out where you want to be in the years to come. So how do you put your workflows in place? What user groups do you want? What privileges do you want them to have? So yeah, from a licensing perspective, you can absolutely have access to it. It's just a question at what stage in your business development do you want to spend the time implementing that? Perfect. So so these questions kind of follow, um, you can, you may have, answered that or how many users are available when you purchase a license yeah so on the CAD side it's concurrent users so when you buy one license you can use that on more than one machine but only one person at one time okay um, and and so each license is is on its own in that regard and um, you can move it around so you can get good good mileage out of it and um, but yeah if you wanted multiple people doing the same thing at the same time you'd need multiple licenses and I, I'm going to need some, uh, I'm not an engineer, but you guys know what STL files are. Can you create STL files for 3D printing? Yeah, absolutely, yeah, I can take that one, Tim. So yeah, absolutely, SolarWorks, I mean, STLs are uh, very, uh, very old school formats for 3D printing and have been around for, for decades, SolarWorks has as well. And um, yeah, absolutely. Um, we also support 3MF and AMF extensions, which are the more modern, I guess versions of, of STLs uh, to, to simplify things for, for 3D printing because they can store material information as well um, and a lot more data about materials and like colors and textures that STLs can it. So yeah, we, we, we can support 3D printing absolutely out of the box in all versions of SolidWorks. Okay, and then uh, I, since seeing this question, I've gone online, but so I, I see, I can see an answer to this, but I'll put it to you. Is there a recognized SOLIDWORKS qualification and education learning zone like LinkedIn Learning? Um, not specifically SOLIDWORKS, I guess. There are so there, there are certifications people can do personally um, for SOLIDWORKS as a, as a user, um, ranging from kind of student level or graduates up to, you know, um, industry sort of, you know, experienced experts such as myself and Tim <laughs> um, where we can we can just basically test ourselves and we get a you know a, a certification or, a, or a, um, that we can you know stick on our CV and we, we it looks good um, from from that perspective there is some there the SolarWorks themselves have a, a website called my.solarworks.com so as a customer um, you can you can create an account on there and you can access some kind of learning paths as well Okay. Um, and they are, I guess, there to not fully replicate classroom training because there's there's no there's no um, there's no better than classroom training when it comes to this. But they're there to supplement it. So uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of information out there in terms of kind of additional training support and then certification of that or knowledge certification. Okay. Um, can you get DXL files, DFX files for profiling parts? Yeah, DXF files. So they're yeah, sort of vector files that typically come from 2D applications such as AutoCAD. You might have heard of that. Yeah. Um, so we can we can import those profiles into SolarWorks sketches um, and use them and you know add dimensions and such, turn them back into kind of intelligent models and build build profiles from it. Yeah. There's no way to open a DXF and have it magically recreate a 3D model from it. Um, but you could use it as a start point, certainly. Yeah. But in terms of that question, can that's more likely to be about exporting DXF files. So once you're finished exporting them to profiling machines, and um, so yeah. yes, we can do that within SolidWorks. But also we have uh, within Solid Solutions, we've created a little tool for doing that more quickly. So rather than saving them out as individual parts, we can save those out as a batch. So if you have a sheet metal assembly, we can develop all of those parts and save the DXFs in one go. So 
yeah, hopefully get you to profiling quite quickly. So we we'll have a question from, uh, and uh, I know where this question is coming from because it's about <laughs> augmented reality, virtual reality from Cahill, Cahill McDonald. Can SolidWorks produce realistic renders? Yes, yeah, they can, it can do all sorts. So you mentioned like, well, three things, renders, VR and AR. So yeah. um, we can do we can do renders. So we have a very powerful rendering application called um, SolidWorks Visualize. Yep. Um, so that allows you to do static images as well as in the pro version, full rendered animations. So these are full ray traced animations and, and pictures. We can also export SOLIDWORKS CAD models to be used in sort of downstream visualization programs such as Blender, uh, yep. Unreal, um, like gaming engine type software for creating VR experiences. Um, so I guess CAD models are, are a different type of data structure to the kind of gaming environment, should we say. Um, they're a little bit heavier, but we have some export tools to we can save out in formats that those types of products can import. Um, we can also with the e-drawings tool that I showed you earlier um, yeah. when we were sharing the drawing. There is a there's a pro version of that that allows you to open up SOLIDWORKS native files in in VR so if you have the appropriate VR hardware on your yep. computer so a headset and, and such you can you can view those in in that vr space um uh, inside of inside of e-drawings which is very powerful um, no, and there's no export or conversion there it does it automatically it's very slick yeah yeah the visualize i've been aware of in my background in the tourism it's certainly been been around and i loved your e-drawings till i thought that was absolutely yeah. Fantastic. I really, really did. Now, this is a question um, because we have a client and James is aware of this client. He, he wants to build three glamping pods. He's overlooking a local lake. And um, I'm just wondering, could you use SolidWorks to explain the initial design and concept? So, and, you know, if, if somebody has, let's say, a blank canvas and they're deciding, right, I want to go for a, a glamping cube, a shepherd's hut, a garden pod, a cabin house, a pod house, a house village, a dome house, but I'm not sure, you know. Yeah. Uh, before you get that highly specific and technical, could you use SolidWorks to to show different from a design and concept perspective what it might look like? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you, SolidWorks is a general purpose modeling tool, right? So you can um, you can really build what you want, I suppose, without yeah. um, promising too much. But yeah, if you can model it, you can show it. So if you've got you know glamping pods, any any sort of structure, you can you know, build a simplified representation of it. Um, to, to show concepts, yeah, absolutely. You could also then put that in situ, so you could, um, you know, you could build an assembly that has multiples of these things all nicely spaced out, and you could show a site layout. Um, and could you do that? Bring that onto the drawing, so you showed us there. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Any anything you build in SolidWorks, parts and assemblies can be shown in drawings. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, um, that's that's all the questions. I'm going to hand you back to James. But well, thank you very much to. To Tim and Graham there for answering those questions. Over to you, James. Yeah, no problem. Just, just thank you very much, uh, Graham and Tim as well. There, I think you, you done a very good presentation there. Um, from a personal background, from myself using SolidWorks, uh, SolidWorks from a designer's point of view, I have dabbled into the using the features such as you know simulation doing the FEA and stuff and animation so where I didn't need that say 10 years ago SolidWorks had them features 10 years ago and they are probably as I would think ahead of the game where I'm now designing stuff because of the there's the software is there I can actually look at the structure to see is the actual chassis strong enough as the materials the right materials for the job if i put in a gusset is it actually doing anything now there, there are questions which we would have over engineered in the past and for no gains so that's why i find SolidWorks works very beneficial for use of designers today going forward yes you do as any company wants to strive to go forward i think going doing detailed drawings like this definitely speeds up time for men or women on the shop floor actually designing something or putting it together there's less questions coming back up and less downtime so the information and details is done away from the costly production floor and you know it just things seem to run a lot smoother well look i'm going to continue on with the rest of the presentation here so um 
Graham, look, and Tim, thank you very much again for your, your help, and no doubt we'll be speaking again. So I'm going to go you. on to the presentation no problem, here. Thanks, James. No problem. Um, unfortunately, Invest couldn't make it today, and I just want to touch on them as well. Invest and I do, we work a lot very closely with them through the innovation vouchers, and the next call isn't out yet, but if you have any good ideas or projects you're looking to get support with, you know, contact them through the website, through inquiries at investni.com. Um, they're up to, the vouchers are up to £5,000 of support there, so definitely worth speaking to. They've, we've worked with them a lot in the past few years and doing some very successful projects. So I'm going to take you to the next slide here and talk about other support available through the college ourselves there. We have a number of programmes here in the college at the minute. You're, if you have any support needs through design or training with the, your business, give us contact. I'm sure we could fit you in somewhere. As again there, you, you can see uh, multiple sources there of programmes. And if I take you to the next slide here, there's some of the clients which we worked at in the past. You see there is a real spectrum there of companies from food to agricultural to heavy engineering to art and stuff as well. So look, please give us a contact if you need any support as well from them industries. Again, Kieran, thanks very much for your comment there on your glamping pods. You can see there on this, these are past projects that I've worked on. The top right and bottom left are an example of some of the solid works of a type of glamping type of structure I've done before. So you can see there, that's a definitely a good concept to start from. You know, in the bottom right, you can see it like a, like a jacuzzi. And on the left hand side, it's probably not detailed enough because it's too so far away, but there's a stove and a couple of chairs in there. That was done for a client just to show the initial type of concept. You can see the top left is an example of a like a structure and you can see the middle one top middle is like a mobile bench and then you've got dugouts and like a like a slurry double bar system. And again, you can see in this past projects here, you can see a slurry tank, stairs and a compressor. Really, in the college, we would help companies either design these or you know, help show them how to design them, I suppose. And look, I'm just going to wrap it up there. And if you have any questions or queries, don't hesitate to give me a call. My details are shown. If you want to contact me, it's Donnelly, je at src.co.uk and my phone number is there. Look, by all means, give me a call at any time and we're only too happy to sit down and talk to you and hopefully help you. So thank you very much and bye bye.